Austria. And uh, the Styrian Panther is really a, a memorable uh, tournament with a, a nice party connected open air. You will like it and you will have a good competition there. Nice teams and nice organization. So uh, I can always uh, recommend that. And uh, it's a good way to test uh, uh, Austrian air before the um, World Championship in 2019. And here we start with the game, Austrian against Perth Riders, uh, men, Vienna against uh, Austria men. And I think we ha will have a lot of spectators here from Austria again. What time is it in Austria? And let's go in this game what time and give you the in info. In Australia. In Australia. <laughs> Sorry. Why, why does it happen to me all the time? It's a German problem, isn't it? No, no, no. I think it's a common problem. Mixing Austria I'm with... Just uh, but I say see. Vienna and Perth now. It's easier. So uh, Perth in white and Vienna in blue. And uh, both teams got stuck in the middle. Uh, 40 seconds in the first half. And with you, I'm just completing this. Vienna just, you know. in blue and uh, Perth in white. I like these uh, trousers of Perth with a sign there. You can easily recognize them. So, uh, Austria is attacking. Fended off uh, by... Uh, Australia is attacking. Again, holy moly. Um, Austria fended off the attack from Australia and is now uh, in a counter-attack. One player is pushing himself in the vicinity of the Australian basket and his teammate is waiting to receive the ball. Vienna is uh, quite uh, active trying to go into the defense line of uh, Perth coming from the close side, but the uh, offense play, uh, here we are in the close side of the basket, the, the, there was no defense for a second, but uh, it looks like Australia tries to play very offensive uh, in direction of uh, the Austri Austrian basket. There's a lot of open space on the basket of uh, Australia. Well, um, the Perth Riders, the female team, did the eighth place in this Champions Cup. Uh, they just played earlier today, or I believe yesterday. And um, the, <coughs> the male team is also competing for the 11th and the 12th place. So let's see how it's going to be. Uh, it's still a great um, um, performance from the Australians that have been playing since almost 10 years in go. the country. That's an attack from one... Uh, Vienna player, uh, but he was fended off. Th th it's really like um, the Austrian Australians uh, try to play with no uh, defense under the basket. They they keep it really open, so they have more players in the when pool, more checking. swimming. But it's a risk against an experienced team like uh, Austria. And we're now on the surface in a cluster fight, and if you play open like this. Uh, you always risk a ball dropping down and the uh, Vienna player catching it and going for the kill on the basket. But it is a style to play. It is more risky, but it gives you more opportunities uh, to go forward. Yeah, I mean, it's a different surface. kind of game. It used to be a game that mm, it was played mostly uh, in the past. Um, a lot of teams now play with a defender, but uh, this having this four checking that we saw for the tactic of the Copenhagen women, it also has its advantage. You just um, need to be very aggressive in the for checking uh, because otherwise it's dangerous. But uh, depending on the on the op opponent you are playing, uh, it could be a very good solution. So let's see, we have three blue in the white basket and they're trying to come from above, trying to pass the partner on the closer side and the uh, Goalie intercepts that pass. It was a great move, but he's fighting in the surface. And the next goal is already in position, and let's see if someone could take uh, the turn of the goalie that was fighting for the ball, because otherwise this is what's happening. Um, there's no one in the basket. Uh? It, it's super and risky. That was yeah, great, wow, exactly. that was a great I mean pass, but very risky because they have huge gaps on the basket. But what they think what they do is keep more players in the game, so they keep it open. But they risk at this moment. It's exactly what happens if you don't have a uh, defender in front of you. Uh, 
but it's a style of playing and it could work. So uh, very well done by uh, Austria and uh, it was a little bit uh, predictable if you have a, a cluster above uh, the goal and it, the goal is empty and there are huge gaps and the defense is not uh, in place. Players like those from Graz, uh, from uh, um, Vienna, score. Let's see. This is the last day. Um, well, all of the teams uh, have two days of, of playing in their bodies, and that could also be. Uh, um, and and here, at this point, uh, the, the yeah. strategy of Australia comes into effect. If they have um, most of their players in the game, forward game, they put uh, Vienna under heavy pressure. Um, you see the, the goal of uh, Vienna is pretty much left alone. There's only a goalkeeper and one forward a little bit. Uh, and, and already the goal is uh, stolen by a uh, Vienna player. Yeah, but when they recover, I mean, they're doing a great job recovering the ball. Oh, okay, they almost lost it. Um, this is this is really a, a great job because the Australians um, don't are not as experienced as of the Austrian guys, and they are really uh, performing great in defending and in keeping mm, the Austrians away. The Austrians are having a, a lot of trouble with the passes. Look, they intercept the passes. This is not the first time they have done that, and and they recover and try to swim away. Mostly they are right to the half of the pool and they have to go back. But even if this is really intense and, and exhausting, still they uh, achieve to one after another time recover the ball. And let's see if they can um, score. I mean, they still have some time. We have the Austria that want to make clear that it's 2-0. So it's more difficult for Australia to catch up with the Austrians. Okay, that was a well fought goal uh, they have been putting pressure since the last uh, five minutes at least so the problem with the strategy i see that australia puts here into effect is uh, when you are under pressure on your own goal you don't have a system uh, of a good system to defend it works fine if you are uh, at least uh, uh, in a, a certain distance away from your own goal because you have many people in the water but in this case with a lot of pressure close to the own basket it's not effective now we have a defense in place, maybe they switch again. But they should switch in the moment they are under pressure. And here we go again, no defender, only goalkeeper and a goal. Yes, I mean, and also if um, the Austrians are uh, very strong as well, they're used to play in the EuroLeague and the EuroLeague, you, we have here in Europe a type of playing that is a bit more uh, um, with, with strength and more, <coughs> a, a bit more Mm, yeah, the, I, I don't know, in Australia, they have a lot of uh, the influence of the Colombia rugby. If they got, uh, if they, then they got um, um, help from the Colombia to develop the sport, then they will have more this swimming around and not this completely physical rugby that we play here, and, and that's a so completely different. Here we, we go, now we see Australia, and we see them <coughs> attacking, and I think their offensive strategy is to be able to put more pressure on the uh, uh, goal of Austria, but since they don't succeed to, to, to establish their attack pattern there, it's not effective. And Austria does a really good job. Let's see. Go uh, in do we have the microphone? Free throw blue. Free throw blue. After these games, all the decisive games of the day will be played. So stay put. So here we go. Uh, four blue under the white basket that can go, that can be <laughs> good. And that's another uh, attacker along with the goalkeeper of the Australians and that's a goal. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Austrians kind of blue found a way to be a bit more Low effective. They have done uh, I believe three goals in the last um, three minutes or so, four minutes. They have been I, either they reached the, the Australians reached the breaking point, uh, or the um, Austrians have uh, got away um, to avoid the, the four checking of the Australians and be underneath the basket. It looks a little time. bit like uh, Austria got a, a taste of blood 
uh, because of the strategy uh, of uh, Australia on their basket. Taste and of blood. Yeah, it's like a feeding frenzy now on the uh, basket of uh, uh, Australia because Austria realized there is no tough defense there. And they looked at how they go in. They, they don't hesitate. It's like they, they think, wow, yeah, we scored. We will score again because they are the defense of... Uh, Oh, that was close. The ball was lying next to the goalkeeper on the Australian basket. And since uh, the That's end of the first half, since the defense of Austria is really open and they try to keep the, the ball away from the goal, they're not prepared to the onslaught of the Austra Austrian uh, players. And the Austrian players realize that they can score uh, even with two players without any problems. Yes, I mean... And I think you have to have a, a change of strategy. Um, Continue. A change of strategy if you realize your original strategy is not working. Well, you always have to keep changing and adapting to the flow of the game. Uh, but I don't see, I mean, the Australian game is uh, still the same and it hasn't really been able to change uh, to stop the, the Austrian attackers because they always position behind the defender. Sometimes they're not even a defender. And they need to now rethink how they're going to play the second half if they don't want to end up with a 10-0 marker. I mean, we are 4-0, but just the last three scores have happened in the last three, four minutes. Yeah, that's so where they realized they, they can just walk yeah. through. Austria, Australia really needs to rethink and maybe play a little bit more defensive because this kind of offensive game they have been doing uh, is not really effective against Austria. Uh, that would be my... So welcome for those new spectators. Huh, now we're off the picture. Uh, uh, welcome everybody who just came into the live stream. We have 189 uh, visitors. Uh, my name is Wolf uh, and I have uh, with me Lorena. We are doing the comments for the Champions Cup uh, for the last two days. Two and, and a half. Two and a half. And it's, it's the third day for us. Well, I just started, yeah. I, I dropped the ball there a bit this morning. And uh, we are uh, really happy to be here and present you the Champions Cup, the biggest underwater rugby tournament in the world. We have uh, 23 teams here in Berlin from 14 nations. We have uh, 14 men break. teams and from Colombia. And don't, don't forget the next three games are going to be the most the hottest. Or I mean we, we had some hot games yesterday that were amazing, but the last, uh, s um, four, the, 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 the last three games will be Bamberg and Orca, Orcas for the third place for the male, Akaren against Langer um, to fight for the first place in the women uh, cup, and uh, Rixu and Flipper for the first place and second place of this Champions Cup uh, 2017. That has been really a surprise. The guy we just saw with a bandaged hand, uh, he's one of the players from uh, Australia. Yeah, he broke, broke his, his hand, hand yesterday. yesterday. He was holding his hand behind his head on the basket and uh, uh, there was a push on his head and he broke his own hand with his uh, head. So uh, we wish him good health. Uh, well, talking about uh, injuries, injuries. And not injuries, please, everyone that is here uh, in the pool, come to see Felicita. She's just sitting and next we start to us. And we start the game again. The study in, uh, injuries, second sorry. half of uh, Vienna against Perth Raiders. And already a score. So it's really like the Austria realized what's going on here. And uh, I haven't seen it, there uh, was a little bit of uh, a commotion here in the uh, monkey box, but I guess uh, uh, Perth Raiders didn't change their strategy in uh, defending. Well, let's see if they can put it in the water in the second half and uh, maybe score against uh, Vienna, but uh, Vienna is going uh, forward really fast while still being uh, able to defend and here we go again there's another really forceful attack on the basket and they they realized go against Austria And uh, back in the game, Australia really has to 
break through the offense defense of uh, Austria and they try here they go in but lose the ball against uh, the strong uh, Austrian uh, for checking and you see it in the in the in the last inch of movement there is more experience here in the uh, Austrian uh, part of the game but uh, to contradict me you just see the Austra Australians uh, securing the ball let's see I mean they're fighting in in the middle now more and uh, it's, uh, let's see if we can they can recover now Australia is coming ah, that's a chance for Australia two Australian players uh, three around three Australian of them around the Australian Australian Australian. and they score great great attack like exactly that's the kind of attack you need in this cup I mean one when you're coming into the counter attack you need to have uh, at least one or two and there were three it was four of them underneath with uh, first the goalie and then the defenders and uh, and, and that's exactly what, what they chaos. need to do yeah. and what what uh, should be in their strategy because if they go all forward they should push as hard as they can against the Austrian basket and I haven't seen that until now so let's see how uh, Austria reacts uh, they go in on the Australian on the Australian uh, basket all right, and now Australia got now a little bit of a push and motivation and is trying with everything they have. Look, they are swimming a counter attack and Austria is trying to really stop well them done. and bring them then to the surface, not to let them swim, they're in the corner. Uh, they need to pass the ball away and the um, Australia guy just made it. Um, so they're still in possession of the ball, but there's something, let's see, I believe White it's free throw. free throw, holding without ball, I believe. That was a good job from Australia right here, uh, fighting their way really fast through the basket and through the uh, uh, forechecking of Aus Austria. Compliments for that and they uh, really uh, woke up like, like I have the push from the goal they uh, made. They fight really hard now. It's getting more physical than in the beginning. And uh, Australia has to prove their strategy. And here we go, back again, uh, back at the Austrian basket. And Austria is a little bit uh, surprised. Uh, they didn't see it coming after their uh, uh, series of goals. They didn't see them coming this hard on them back again. And we we're in the corner of the Austrian basket. And the Australian are in ball control. Player coming in, fresh player coming in, waiting at the basket. We're in the corner still in Austria, recover the ball, and is already on the counter attack. This is dangerous for Austria. Two Austrian player Australia Sorry guys. So that was a really nice uh, counter attack from Austria, but it was uh, very well stopped. And now one Austrian player stole the basket of Australia and uh, don't see where the ball is, it's right in front, I guess, uh, of uh, the basket and blocked, uh, tackled away by Australian players. And here we go again, one-on-one -on -one Australia against uh, the goal, Australia against the goalkeeper from Vienna, but he only made one uh, really uh, not that forceful push and then try to get away because the defense was already on its way. But uh, Australia really is picking up the pace right now and trying to put pressure on uh, the Austrian basket, going in and in again and again. Um, and this is, this is a good strategy. And uh, this is a situation, if we can break free uh, above the basket of uh, Austria, it would, uh, would open up the chance for uh, for a pass left and right where his colleagues were waiting. What a referee call. It was a free call from a referee strangling on the surface. Uh, free uh, referee free throw on uh, right. <coughs> against Three Blue. minutes to go, go and 6-1. And you see that Australia changed a little bit the strategy that be more effective. So 6-1, I mean, they haven't got a score in this half so far. So that's a great job. I mean, respect. It's difficult to recover after such a marker or um, the last um, 
the last uh, game of the, of, the, of the day for them. But um, this is really a, a very great performance. Uh, and they are now more in the basket of Austria, and I think Austria is a little bit surprised because they were so much in control of the ball in the first half that they don't understand that Australia now is uh, created this kind of chaos and a score even uh, on their basket. Yeah, and Australia took over the game, uh, but uh, uh, to be honest, uh, Austria uh, is not really like... Uh, No, almost in an empty basket. He just, I mean, the Austrian guy just hold it. I mean, now it's trying to pass to the next Australian guy underneath the goalie. They're still fighting above the goal of uh, the Austrian and the, the goalie intercept that ball. I mean, um, now they're counter-attacking and uh, this was going to be, well, that was a great job. And this guy is fighting against two Austrian and intercept the ball and really rescue so far. The, 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 the danger of the score, that was amazing job from the Australian side, how, and the Austrians cannot believe it, <laughs> that it should have been a clear goal, and they're just fighting, and Australia recovered the ball, what happened there, I think call it was the holding, referees, but holding but without ball, I believe, or White something. two minutes, oh. both changing. Ooh, okay. One white two minutes. Oh, no. It's a time penalty for uh, one of the Australian players five, for five rough two, playing. Two Ah, they had a wrong change. Yep. Two minutes, false changing, free throw against White. Well, that's uh, unfortunate, but will not change anything in the outcome. Um, but uh, well, hopefully it's not seven White. One. They need time to now. White. Time out White, they have to rearrange their team. How many sides? So, um, what I wanted to say later on, uh, uh, early on, uh, I guess Austria was a little bit surprised uh, by the way uh, Australia put up the pace and um, I think this is Riksu coming in, they always play uh, music. Um, but Austria is leading uh, with a 6-1 uh, uh, lead and it's no uh, big danger for them uh, to uh, to lose this lead well, no within the next minute. Australia don't want to have another score. I mean, they need to concentrate and focus on defending for the last minute because they are with five players on the water now. And one minute. So with less than one minute in the last half here, oh Australia the, the against... Is, the clock is working already. Well... Uh, changing, wrong changing. And uh, Blue got, I got I have to talk to him about that. Okay, we have uh, less than a minute left. And uh, Australia is coming. No, 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 it went in too early. But we have uh, Ford checking uh, in He's the middle of the pool now. Uh, Vienna is going in, but interrupted by an uh, Australian player. And. It's going back and forth, but Austria now reached the Australian basket coming from above. But I have to admit, uh, the last uh, five to six minutes, Australia is almost another team yes, in Australia the water. Yes, couldn't, couldn't score at all. And then I think if they <laughs> uh, would have played, they if, six if they would have played like this with the strategy they have to play more open in the from the beginning, probably we would have seen a different uh, game. Still uh, being won by uh, Austria, but nevertheless. Um, this was a higher pace and better game. Then we have another attack on the goalkeeper. He was pushed up and time over in this uh, match between Austria and Australia. Okay, everybody, please uh, welcome uh, Bogdan here in our uh, monkey box, in our commentator box. He's from uh, Waterfins. You might heard of him and you might have used what he is holding in his hand. 
Uh, these are the fins uh, most of us are using, and uh, these are the fiberglass fins, the top uh, fiberglass fins. Yeah. And Bogdan is the one uh, selling them here right uh, in uh, uh, the Champions Cup 2017. And now, listen up, guys. The top scorers will get, each of them, a pair of these fins uh, at the party in uh, the club Buffalo. So uh, this is quite something. So you have already three, game, uh, three, three games left to be the top scorer. Yeah. So throw as much if you, as you can. And uh, well, it's a, it's a great thing from Bogdan to offer us uh, these fins because you know they are not that cheap. And to have a spare pair, that's quite something you want to have. And it's a yeah, great thing. We have to talk about the size then. Um, well, uh, size, it depends from, we have XXL, uh, exactly. XXL, it depends on Norway guys, uh, big yeah, guys, yeah. so they can... We, we would uh, normally use XXL for small girls. <laughs> <laughs> so. so, yes, uh, it's a big thanks uh, to Bogdan for this offer, for the top scorers of the Champions Cup, and I think we will have, uh, have really happy players. Um, Yes, and uh, for sure you can order them uh, online at uh, uh, waterwaysfins.com. Dot com. And uh, how long does it normally take Bogdan to get the fins in Europe? In Europe, we try to ship in two weeks. So two weeks. You get fins in two weeks. It's a custom-made fins, so you yes. give specification, stiffness, foot pockets, and we. Are yeah, and uh, um, if you uh, used to playing with uh, hard fins, and if you used to this open uh, way, there are different uh, foot uh, pockets uh, also available. But uh, if you're used to this foot pocket and you have uh, strong uh, uh, legs and they're used to fins, these are the fins you want to play because they have an awesome kick. They're really nice, and you will love them. So, anything you want to add? Our things will last long. I mean yes, five years for sure. That's true. That's yeah. absolutely true. Uh, if you take care of them, uh, you sure could break these fins, but you really have to be uh, to do stupid fins with them. And if you take care of them, they last for a long time, and you will have a lot of fun with them. Yeah, I have mine now for uh, I think four years, yeah. and they still work like rockets. Okay. <laughs> Welcome, guys. We have work for you. Okay, thanks a lot to Bogdan and uh, we're looking forward uh, to give this uh, present to the top scorers. Bogdan from waterwayfins.com. Thanks a lot. All right, everybody. I really like uh, those fins. Uh, yeah. 